day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are copying an 1880s original dress. Alright, and as a reminder, this is the dress we're copying. Um, a friend of a friend gave her to me. I think she's like mid-1880s, I'm not great at this time frame, but that's what I got. It's a cotton twill stripe uh, trimmed with lace, a very thick kind of... Uh, almost a Clooney lace. Anyway, we're going to start with the skirt, which I'm going to kind of show y'all. Um, the skirt's actually in lots of pieces. Sorry, the cat's playing with the camera again. Um, so the whole bit of the skirt has an underskirt. And it's entirely made, this is the polished cotton that she used, and it has a facing all the way around, about four inches, I think it's actually three and a half inches wide, of the fashion fabric. So I have to cut one entire skirt out of lining fabric. Now I thought I had some really nice brown cotton, actually almost identical to this. I do, I just don't have enough of it. So I don't have time to order more because I kind of need this pretty quickly and I waited till last minute to do this. So we're going to use white cotton today as my lining fabric, which isn't ideal, but um, white cotton was seen as a lining fabric in Victorian times, great, so I'm fine with it. Um, and then there's several other pieces. So there's a front piece that is cut on the fold, and there's a seam that is hidden by the lace. And then from here to her back, where'd it go? Here is another piece, a side piece. And then there's the back. And I'm going to take her bodice off for just a second. So we can really take a look at this. And all her closures have fallen off. But essentially, it's really funny. You can see her whole line back skirt is gauged. Um, this would have attached. What on earth are you doing with that camera? And you can see where it attaches. And this is all just hand uh, basted with huge stitches all the way up until about right here where you can actually see it. And then she starts doing tiny stitches, which I think is hilarious. Anyway, and then this part which is also gauge. The gauge, gauging has come out a little bit here, but this just fits right over top and gives you a little bit of a bustle. Now I actually have a bustle in her right now. Um, but yeah, so basically it's just three pieces. We're gonna cut one entire skirt of lining and we're gonna sew it up. So yeah, I'm leaving her here so I can use her as a guide as I cut this thing out. Now we're not gonna talk about the bodice yet. I haven't had her an itch, I have not fitted it. I haven't worked on getting any of this part patterned out or anything. I'm just going to focus on the skirt. So let's go ahead and get cutting that. We're going to cut it out of, or cut the lining part first. Um, the only difference I'm going to make to the pattern, the pattern has a one and a half inch hem. And uh, she doesn't do that. She uses a facing. Oops, there she is. And also hem braids, which I'm going to need. I don't need to dye it because I have a much lighter fabric. Yes. Okay, but she has a facing of the same fabric. Um, so this is about four inches wide. This is five inches wide then. So really she cut it six inches wide. Um, so I'm gonna need some facing out of the same fabric, same white fabric. And, but, um, but we're not doing hem in the lining fabric, we're doing a facing. So I need to cut an inch off the hem so instead of a one and a half inch hem, I will have a half inch in, which will then be taken up in the facing. Okay, I could have marked this, but I didn't think about it. So we're just gonna do it as we go. about me actually doing some 60s stuff is I know how to sew gourd skirts together. You generally always sew a um, diagonal side to a straight side. That way it keeps it from hanging oddly. Take the original inside out and just check a few things. I need to check on the seams. I also need to check on, I do know the outer material was pleated and not darted, but I'm wondering if the lining was darted. All right, so this is the fabric we're working with. It's a lot lighter um, in color than the original, but the original is orange and I don't wear orange well. So I've modified the color slightly, but I got a 12. That's the same 
weight of the original and also the same pattern, um, at least as far as stripes. The stripes are the same width, although I will say instead of, um, instead of having this uh, light brown stripe, that would have been the actual orange color and there wasn't a stripe in the bigger part. But it's overall pretty close and I'm happy with it uh, to find something that I can A, wear color-wise and was not very expensive and it's gonna work. Anyway, so I'm gonna cut the facing out of um, the fashion fabric like the original. We're gonna cut six inch pieces. I'm gonna cut them from the pattern pieces. That way they, um, they fit very nicely because there's no folds or tucks taken in the original one. So we're gonna try to copy that. And I'm gonna leave this on the floor. I'm gonna cut piping out. Wait, I don't need piping. This is the 1880s. So maybe I can cut a piece off of this. All right, so cutting out the rest of the skirt. I'm sorry, Leo's over here. He's having the time of his life because he loves cameras. I'm sorry. You need to quit being annoying so I can cut this out. These are not going to get sewn together. They're going to get tacked to the base skirt. Look at baby Leo. Baby. Now I have all my skirt pieces cut at least, except for the leg and the waistband. But we'll worry about that later. So what I need to do right now is uh, I did cut facing for the underside of the skirt. I need to sew the pieces together just like we did the uh, striped part of the facing and then we can sew it that to the inside and then we'll be ready to put the outer part on. Alright, so we're here at the sewing machine sewing on the facing. So there's the front facing and the back facing, which gets sewn on by machine apparently. We don't sew this by machine in the 1850s and 60s. All right, so we're putting the skirt on, um, or the skirt, well yeah, the skirt's going to go on the underskirt type thing. The base skirt is what I've been calling it. So this is the center front panel. I have just laid it over top the uh, lining fabric for a base skirt. I need to get my term straight. And I'm sorry, the cats are fighting in the background. They're having a day. All right. We gotta find my seam. So what I'm gonna do now that I have this side pinned is I'm gonna sew it right on that seam line um, for the base skirt. And I'll probably go back and trim all this excess off that I just added. All right, so now we have that done. I trimmed it up, it looks all nice. We're gonna take our side piece, fold it right over. I should have not sewn this part of the side seam, the back part, I should have sewn it and the back piece together and then hand stitched it up where the placket is. That was my mistake. I was looking at the bottom and it appeared to be all machine stitched just like the other side. But when I was looking at the top to see how, you know, how far the, down the placket was, that's when I realized I did it wrong. Um, I'm going to leave it because I don't feel like taking out all those hand stitches. So it's just going to stay. But I need a placket that is uh, 10 inches from the top that's going to be left open. Uh, it, I originally thought it was 15, but I realized that the when I'm looking at the dress, the left side is like more like 18 because the seam ripped out, and I didn't know that. Uh, but you can see around 10 inches where the seam was, where it ended. So I'm going to go with what it originally was, not what it is now. Now comes the trimming. So I have here the lace which was a little bit wider, but then I washed it, and it's, it's a little smaller than the original now. And this part goes up 14 inches. It's really 13 and a half, but I just went forth with 14. I'm also slightly taller than her, so I thought adding a little bit would make the proportions look right. And we're just about done with the skirt. We have hem braid and, of course, the waistband and hem braid. I'm just using undyed wool hem braid here. And mine's a little bit wider than the originals. Um, I'm using what I have in the stash. 
this is um, about an inch. I think hers was three quarters of an inch. Yeah, it was, it was close. All right, so we're at the point where I'm putting in the waistband. So there's two waistbands on the original. And there's the main one and there's that back piece that kind of folds up. So I'm working on that back piece first. So I have here, um, I just did two rows of gauging thread. I did the same on the lining just here. They, she did it on the raw edge, so I'm doing it on the raw edge, which is very strange to me. <laughs> but okay, that's how we do it now, apparently. Um, so I'm just taking the waistband, and she was doing little tiny whip stitches uh, just to one side. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing all the way across here, uh, kind of whip these ends, and then we can work on the actual waistband. All right, so waistband. Waistband has been prepped, and by prepping, I mean I cut the waistband, and then I cut a little strip. Uh, okay, guess the waistband I cut three and a half inches wide, folded in half, and an inch seam allowance, which is what she did. Um, leaves me about a, a quarter, with, leaves me with a one and a quarter inch waistband, and then I cut a piece of the fashion fabric, approximately an inch and a half wide, folded it to be three quarters of an inch, um, and then stitched it just with a whip stitch along the top of the white one. This, um, I didn't quite do how she did in terms of measurements because she only has four inches in the back that um, th th this wasn't here, so it was two inches on the one side, two inches on the other. But because I have a larger waist than her, I opted to extend that just so, um, I guess just for proportion's sake, proportion's sake. So I have it gauge that part and I stitched it on just how we did the um, other waistband. So this is still free and in a moment I'm going to go through and sew that on as soon as I get the whole thing done. I've taken two tucks and what I did is I measured out um, I guess six inches. So it was going to be six inches of gauging and then I measured that out and then I put a pin here and a pin in the center. I realized I had three extra inches of fabric on the skirt. I see on the original there's one pleat in the front and one pleat on the side. It's a box pleat basically on either side of the lace. So I just took an inch and a half here and an inch and a half here and it fits my waistband now. Hers are different because her measurements are different. But this is what's going to fit me and it's still the same idea. So it's still the two pleats and it's box pleated just like she had it. Cutting out the bodice. So I um, am using the Timely Tresses 1885 bodice. It had all the pieces I need. The pieces are slightly different shapes, but that may come down to her size and um, her body shape. It still has the exact, it has you know, the back, the side back, the side, and the front. And it looks like it's going to work. I know how to make Truly Victorian patterns fit me. They are extremely long-waisted, and that is coming from a person who is not short-waisted. So I've learned to cut a vastly smaller size size on the shoulder and neckline and on the uh, bottom of bodices and then the wider one across. I just know how to make them fit me now. I'm using, I haven't quite fitted this yet, actually I haven't fitted this at all. I am cutting out of the real fabric. I have so much fabric left over. Um, I don't know, I think when I first looked at the dress, I didn't look too deep inside and I saw that facing and I assumed it was a whole skirt of the fashion fabric then a whole overskirt of fashion fabric. And it wasn't, it had mostly lining and the underskirt part. So I didn't have to use nearly as much fabric as I thought. So I have lots and lots and lots of extra fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the mock-up in my fashion fabric. And if it works great, I'll have lots of extra fabric to do something with. If not, I have, I have enough to make at least five other bodices. <laughs> I did see that the um, sleeves are no longer on the bias, which is very strange to me. But I was also thinking this is really one of my first dresses where the arm size isn't dropped either. You know, all the way from the 1820s, all the way up, really to the you know later 1860s at least, this arm size dropped, and even very slightly on my 1870s dress it is. So I actually forgot I was filming this for a little bit, so I did quite a bit on the bodice. So. I think I lost both to you when I was fitting it. It fit mostly okay. Here's the puppy dog wanting attention. So it fit mostly okay. 
Um, I ended up recutting the front simply because I didn't realize that the original, I didn't realize the original, well, I knew the original uh, folded the, the selvages over. I did not realize the pattern meant me to do a bag lining, which isn't done in this period as far as I know yet. So it makes no sense why the pattern would have that, but okay, whatever. So I needed to add an inch and a half to the um, front. So I just recut the front. And other than that, it worked fine. So I did that. I did buttons and buttonholes. Unfortunately, it's like nine o'clock at night and I'm wearing this tomorrow. So I didn't do my buttonholes by hand, which I have not cheated on buttonholes since my, okay, my first dress I did do machine bound buttonholes because I didn't know better then. Second dress I did buttonholes, I knew better. So it's been over 10 years since I've done any period stuff by machine as far as buttonhole go. And I felt awful doing it. I really did. But I don't have the time to machine sew them or I don't have the time to hand sew them tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear them machine sewn tomorrow and then I'm going to rip them out and do them by hand for the next event. So they'll only be machine done for this event. So I'm hoping that it won't ravel too much because this fabric is kind of a little bit ravelly. If it gets too bad, I'll just take my sleeves inside out and, you know, fix it then. The uh, binding on the original was bias. It's not what the pattern said to do, but the original is bias, so I'm biasing. And it did look like the seams were pressed flat, at least in the areas that I saw. And I'm just going to pull the lining fabric when I do my stitching, not the fashion fabric. She whipped that to that edge by hand. And this is done by hand too. I just can't figure out if she went through all the layers or just through. Okay. Okay, she went through all the layers. This is the part I'm not going to, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to finish by tomorrow is this little cording bit. Which is quite interesting. You can see how grimy it got. <laughs> Alright, we're working on the very last step. Sewing on the lace. Which I'm just using little running stitches. And I did this on the collar. This is the front of the bodice. And I have sleeves to do as well. Well, I've got other things i got to do tonight. So I will finish this and we'll talk when we have the project done. Alright, here we are. So all of my 1880 stuff, combinations we made on the channel, actually everything we made on the channel, combinations, corset, bustle, petticoat. I tried 1880s hairstyling today, it kind of worked. But here's the skirt. And of course I have the original right next to me, which I will move over in a moment. I think this is usually easier from the side and then to push it over. I'm dressing myself. Okay. I can just kind of slide this over in theory. Hopefully without sliding the bustle over. Keep in mind I have worn this like once. It was several months ago at this point, but it was once that I wore it. I think that's more or less even. Yep, it's falling down my oh my hair is falling. That felt really weird. I'm not wearing shoes today, so it's a little long on me, but that's because I'm not wearing shoes. Buttonholes are finally done. I had a good friend show me exactly how to do them, so they turned out really nice looking actually. They're the best buttonholes I've ever done. Well, some of them look a little wonky, but the vast majority of them look really, really good. Up to her standards, not quite, but pretty dang close. I'm actually kind of impressed. Let me move her over. There she is. Where did I get off? Did I get off at the top? I got off somewhere. I want more buttonholes than I do buttons. I got off at the top. <laughs> okay, we'll redo we'll just redo this. Yeah, it fits looser now. <laughs> I mean it's not super loose, it's it's like wearable loose. It's not to the point where I would refit it. Aha! There we go. 
there it is. So, the big old bustle in the back. <laughs> she doesn't have her bustle on right now because I stole her bustle to wear it. But, the back. Get the bustle. Alright, I'm glad I have a dress for this time frame. I mean, I definitely needed it going to Pioneer Farms, and we're actually working on the Bell House right now, and the Bell House is interpreted as 1886, so I did need an 1880s dress for that. I need to work on a bonnet for 1880s. But, um, so it was needed. It was a needed project. Am I a fan of this time frame? No. Will I, prob will I make another dress? Probably not. And as far as the design goes, like, we, we hit the design on the nail including the weird fungi skirt back here, but, you know, it is what it is. We copied an original. I'm not a fan of these sleeves, though. That's just weird. Well, I guess that it's like 1880s, like, it's a thing, but not a fan. I think I even like the 1830s giant poof as opposed to this. I know what it is, though. I'm used to having my arms by, like, down here. And it's weird having my arms like where it's actually supposed to sit. At least according to modern people. I prefer the dropped arm side though, so. Yeah, I think that's really where, really where my time frame ends. Like in the later 1860s and 1870s when they stopped doing the dropped arm side. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm done now. But we're not going to go any further. I like my dropped arm side. I really don't do anything pre-1825, which is when the dropped arm side started. I'm pretty much a dropped arms eye era gal. So with all that being said, the 1880s dress. Don't be expecting this again. This is just about it. Maybe me might make one other outfit, but probably not. If you're into the 1880s, I would suggest probably go find another channel because you're not going to get a lot of that from me. Uh, I do earlier stuff. But for what it is, I think it turned out really well. So thank you so much for joining me today as we delved into the 1880s and copied our accent garments. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.